Before we get into today's show, let me tell you about HubSpot. If you're hustling in the trenches to build a business or bootstrapping one of your own, let's talk about an AI-powered tool that can lighten up your workload a bit. HubSpot's campaign assistant is a game changer for creating marketing campaigns at scale. It quickly turns your key selling points into a cohesive pitch, which helps you deliver knockout emails, ads, and landing pages in minutes. So let campaign assistant take care of the campaigns so you can get back to growing your business. Work smarter, not harder at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. All right. What's going on, everyone? It's Friday, March 11th, and you are listening to The Hustle Daily Show. I'm Zachary Crockett, and I'm here with two of our staff writers today, Juliet bennett Ryla and Mark Dent. Good to have you back on the show. Yeah, excited to be back once again. So today, we are going deep on the Great Resignation. We've all seen the headlines about American workers leaving their jobs in droves. But what's driving that trend? And what are the personal and systemic issues that are detracting people from the modern workplace right now? Mark talked to a bunch of folks who have made career moves during the pandemic, and he's got some insight for us. But before we get into that, let's do the news. The latest Fed data came out yesterday, and it's not looking pretty. Inflation was up to 7.9% year over year in February. That's the biggest jump in 40 years. Food, rent, gas, pretty much every major living expense is climbing. And economists say that things are poised to get a bit worse. Those February numbers don't fully capture the boosts that we've seen since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And Moody's estimates that inflation is now costing the average American household about $300 extra per month. Amazon has announced a 20 for 1 stock split, the first of its kind since 1999. What's that mean exactly? Well, the stock is currently trading for a little under $2,800 per share. After the split, it did go down to $140 a share and investors would get an additional 19 units. Analysts say the stock split would make the company more accessible to a broader audience of retail investors. And we should say Amazon isn't alone here. Alphabet, Tesla, Meta, and NVIDIA have all had stock splits in the past year. Goldman Sachs is the latest company to pull out of Russia and the first major Wall Street bank to do so. The company didn't state how much the move would cost them, but their total market exposure in Russia is said to be around $400 million dollars. Of course, that's a small sliver of their $59 billion 2021 revenues, so it should be a fairly palatable move for them. And lastly, another major question emerging from the sanctions in Russia is how all of this is going to affect the auto industry. Car makers have already been plagued by chip shortages during the pandemic, but Western Ukraine is a top manufacturer of car wiring systems, and the Russian invasion has introduced yet another pain point on that front. So all of this is likely going to lead to a serious reconsideration of globalized supply chains in the coming years. That's going to do it for the news. Let's move into our big story. So, Mark, this term, Great Resignation, uh, it's dominated the news over the past year. We've seen it everywhere. And to start things off, I guess, what is the Great Resignation? What do people mean exactly when they use that term? Right. I, I feel like great resignation is like the best buzzword of all time, or at least of recent time. It's it's right. just like stuck in the news forever. And it's not one that you hate. Like it actually makes sense, unlike a lot of just kind of corporate talk. But about a year ago, May 2021, this Texas A&M professor named Anthony Klotz was doing an interview with Bloomberg. And this reporter was just asking him about what companies should be doing when their employees leave and what employees should be doing when they leave jobs. And Klotz dropped the word great resignation because he Mm. thought there were going to be a lot more people leaving jobs soon. And at that point, there were a few more than normal leaving because about a year ago, 12, 14 months ago, somewhere around 2.6% of American workers were voluntarily leaving their jobs. And Mm. that was a bit higher than we usually see, which if you're not in a recession is around 2%, maybe 2.5% in a wild month. But then in the coming months after this kind of buzzword, great resignation came out, there were a heck of a lot more people leaving their wow. jobs. So, so usually, as you said, we see a rate of around 2%. That's the percent of Americans who are quitting their jobs in any given month? Yeah, that's exactly right. It's, it's okay. called like quits data on the Federal Reserve is, is what they kind of use the term as. And that number started going up from around 26 from last spring into 2.9 and then 3% by September. And this meant that about 4 million American workers were leaving their jobs every month. Wow. Okay. And it hasn't stopped. I mean, it's it was 2.8% in January of 2022, which is the most recent month for which data is available. 
And I, and I know there is a little bit of a debate around whether the term should even be great resignation, right? Yeah, like there's a lot of people who are calling it more of like a great renegotiation mm. because it's not necessarily people who are leaving their jobs and then like moving to, you know, the tropics and just never working again for the rest mm -hmm. of their lives. It's people who are, you know, taking a better offer. Like there were, for instance, 11 million jobs available in December and January over these last mm. few months. And so when you see 4 million people leaving, but then there's 11 million jobs available, it's like, okay, a lot of those people are just taking new jobs. But, but I do still think there's an element to this that is driving all of these quits does kind of have to do with that sentiment of not wanting to work. Because even if people are taking these new jobs, I think a lot of them are in some ways, even if they're not explicitly quitting work forever, they're taking a job that might have some sort of benefit that makes it feel more palatable, that, that mm. makes work feel a little bit better. So we actually ran a survey here at The Hustle of more than a thousand readers who actually did leave their jobs and I think the big question is, why are they leaving? It's not something that we've gotten a ton of insight on, but what did, what did we find in our survey here? Yeah, well, most people did leave for like, you know, the reason why people have been leaving jobs since like jobs have existed. They found another one with better pay. And that was around 27% of our respondents said that that's why they were leaving. And then people found more rewarding jobs after that. Another 17% left because of burnout. 10% to pursue a new career path, 8% for a better flexible work atmosphere, and then 6% to start their own business. There was a lot of reasons why people were leaving. And burnout is something that's been kind of thrown around a lot during all this great resignation talk. And, and usually it's about the kind of white collar professionals that we hear it about, like the tech worker who has to answer too many emails like late at night mm. or, or whatever, getting burned out. About 17% of those professions in our survey were burned out, but the same number was true for people who worked in like the service industry or who worked in like blue collar professions. So it was sort of this feeling of not really wanting to work as much was pretty common throughout the entire economy mm. based on what we saw. Yeah, and I, I guess I've, I've seen another argument be made that what we're seeing right now isn't a worker problem. It's a problem on the behalf of companies not incentivizing their workers enough to stay, right? So maybe refusing to raise wages um, and be competitive in this landscape or maybe not offering benefits packages, things like that. Right now, we are in a worker's market, so to speak, in certain ways. As you said, there are tons of job openings. There's also a general sentiment among certain people that companies just aren't stepping up to the plate to answer the demands of workers. Yeah, and, and like a theme really seemed to be that people who were leaving their jobs understood that they have these new advantages because so many other people are leaving their jobs. So it was like kind of like a, a cycle, uh, if you will, or a circular effect where one person's mm -hmm. desire to leave was in some ways sparked by seeing so many other people leave and knowing mm -hmm. that they could find greener pastures somewhere. Right. Juliet, I know you're also a fan like me of the anti-work subreddit this community of folks who have begun to question the norms of the workplace. And you'll often see kind of interesting posts on there from maybe over demanding bosses or unrealistic work expectations, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tend to hang out there quite a bit. And it's also a subreddit I like called Malicious Compliance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where you'll have an example of a boss who's like, I demand you do this thing exactly in this way, even if it's perhaps not the best way to do something. And then the worker just does it exactly as instructed. And of course, it's a big disaster. <laughs> and I've, I've been noticing in both of these subreddits, there are people who have come to the realization that they don't have to deal with a boss like that. You know, a lot of them, they're not in these tech jobs. There was somebody who worked at a fast food restaurant. And I remember they requested a day off several weeks in advance for something really important. The boss was just like, you have to come in anyways, was just screaming at them. And like within the course of one day, they got a different different job at the donut shop down the street. <laughs> and they're just like, I don't have to put up with this. I don't have to put up with being on call for minimum wage, no benefits, people who yell at me, I'm just not going to do it because if this manager can't treat me with respect, five places down the street are hiring. Right. Yeah. And that's a, that's a great point too. When we're looking at this kind of bigger picture quits data, it just encompasses so many different types of people. 
Of course, there are more privileged tech workers who are maybe facing burnout and just need a break from work and they have the cushion to be able to do that. But then there are also people who work in service jobs and who are living check to check who just are not satisfied with the way they're being treated. And Mark, you recently spoke to four different people who were kind of all over this spectrum. Uh, I'd love to start with this guy, Lucas Ochoa in Louisville, Kentucky. He has kind of an interesting story. Yeah, so uh, you guys were kind of bringing up the type of service jobs and, and the, the difficult labor in, in those. And Lucas Ochoa, who I spoke with, just really kind of resembles that. So he is kind of like a part-time student. You know, he'd been working on uh, getting a certificate for EMT and, and he'd been doing some junior college work as well. And then, you know, just a few months ago, he started working at this restaurant in downtown Louisville one of those pretty fancy restaurants actually, hmm. or so it appears when, when people go there to eat, but they don't see what's going on behind the scenes when it's, mm-hmm. it's not fancy at all because it was, they were short staffed and he had management demanding a lot from him on one particularly busy night when they should have had three different servers assistants and instead they only had him, uh, one servers assistant. So he's hmm. running back and forth between the kitchen and to the tables in the restaurant. He's had literally three Gatorades, uh, like he's sweating and uh, (laughs) his hands are full. And the manager asks him like, hey, could you carry another platter? And he just responds, could you pay a living wage? (laughs) And, uh, you know, that that leads to an argument that leads to him resigning. And then he takes another job at a Starbucks soon after that. He gets pretty good wages and all, but then he ends up getting, according to what he told me, shut out by management uh, after he asked about corporate pay raises. And now he's working as a security guard. So it's it's mm. just kind of like this cycle for him of going from job to job, you know, still not quite content with where he is. But the thing that really stands out for me is what he said in this whole kind of great resignation is that especially in the restaurant industry, the workers are finally realizing some of the power that they have to kind of stand up against management that has really not treated them well for, for many years. And I mean, I know Juliet, like, I mean, you, you used to work uh, in the restaurant industry for many years. Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts. Yeah. And what is interesting to me is I worked in the restaurant industry during the recession. I was also working as a journalist, but bartending at night because my journalism job was a permalance job with no benefits that did not pay as well Mm. as bartending did. And I worked in bars, restaurants, chain restaurants, diners, cafe, all different types of restaurants and bars. And it was just kind of expected that that was going to be a job where you weren't treated well. You were going to have a manager who was going to yell at you and possibly sexually harass you. The customers were certainly going to do that. You worked long hours. You never really knew when you were going to get off. If you had a Saturday night off, like your phone would just blow up all day with people trying to get you to cover their shifts. Like you really had no time. Mm -hmm. And then you weren't encouraged to quit. It was just, you know, suck it up, pay your bills, get through this. And now I find that people are quitting over things that are much milder than things that I put up with because it was a recession. Mm. Like I worked at a dive bar that was so surly that uh, one time a customer bit me on the face (laughs) while he was ordering. I had a customer like come behind the bar and shove me into like the well of liquor bottles and like cut my arm up on the poor spouts. And it was just like, that's another night at this bar. But my treatment there wasn't really any worse than a third shift at a certain burger and shake restaurant that I worked at for a couple of years. And you just put up with it because it was the recession. Mm -hmm. And now I think that's why I get such a kick out of anti-work because I'm like, yes, go you, you 19 year old who's not going to put up with a manager calling Mm -hmm. you names and yelling at you like it's your time. Take it. Right. And, you know, I I talked to actually a couple of other restaurant workers as well. And, you know, and, you know, we were kind of talking about how there's like this momentum of when people leave, like other people start seeing that they can leave as well. But there's also a practical aspect to it. I, I kind of found out while talking to a lot of restaurant workers, which is that as more people leave, 
it's like these experienced waiters or, or bartenders are leaving and they're being replaced by inexperienced people who are not ready for the demands of the job, which is then causing more experienced people to leave. And, and yet the restaurants just keep hiring these new inexperienced people. And it, I think it's really also mm-hmm. shining a light on how oftentimes in, in this country, we have just sort of seen a lot of jobs as, as like, hey, just find someone to do it. Like not everybody can just do that job. These are difficult right. jobs here. There's no such thing as unskilled labor, I think is what we've learned. You know, people just think mm-hmm. like, oh, anyone can pour liquids in a cup. Anyone can flip a burger. Anyone can carry a plate from point A to point B. Same with, you know, jobs outside of the restaurant industry, hotels, just working at a store. But those jobs require a certain level of customer service and professionalism. And they're often harder and more demanding than any of these cushy jobs where we get to sit in an office all day. I certainly feel that those kind of jobs that I did when I was younger were way, way harder than the jobs that I've had lately. So you've got these folks like Lucas, they're at the point where they're fed up with systemic abuse in the workplace. But Then you've got this other camp who maybe for them, the pandemic just made them reconsider their priorities. You spoke to another woman, um, a working mother named Verena in Washington, D.C. Tell us about her, Mark. Yeah, so she was working for an international move company. Uh, It was a job that she liked, but it was, you know, one of those jobs where you had to work a lot of hours, you know, pretty much like every job these days. And during the pandemic, it it just got a lot worse because as we know, supply chain issues for the last two years, and that was definitely an issue for people who were moving internationally and had all their things coming. And so it became very stressful for her. And at the same time, she was at home spending more time with her husband and her child, And then she gave birth to a second child in 2020 and then realized sort of then like, look, what am I doing? Like, I got to spend more time with my family, especially at this sort of like key moment in her children's lives. It was just really hard to do that, though, because they lived in Washington, D.C., and they had to pay, you know, a billion dollars a month roughly for rent. (laughs) And so they needed all of her salary that they could get. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, this is kind of where, like, all these sort of great resignation things come together, right? Like, this Mm -hmm. is, like, why things are so nuanced. We had one person feeling a little burned out, wanting to spend more time with family. Her husband happened to get a new job too, and this one was remote because companies were offering greater flexibility now. So there's another element of great resignation stuff. So because of that, they were able to move to Antigua, Guatemala, uh, which is where her husband was originally from. And their rent is about half of what it was in Washington, D.C. And it's enough to where Verena was able to leave her job. And now she's just raising her children full time. And and she doesn't expect to stay out of the labor force forever, but she intends to for a little while and and maybe even go back and get a master's degree and switch careers or or something like that. But it it was kind of like all these elements kicked in Mm -hmm. and maybe offered her this really nice opportunity, both a personal opportunity and and hopefully a professional one for her. Okay. So The third camp here is, of course, people who maybe work traditional jobs and saw the Great Resignation as an opportunity to start their own thing. Mark, you also talked to an entrepreneur named Dominic out in Phoenix. Yeah, and Dominic had just like, you know, kind of your regular corporate kind of career. He'd worked for, you know, Netflix, Paychex was his most recent job, but just, you know, a variety of companies over the last, you know, 10 or 12 years that since he had started his career, really. Mm -hmm. And he just got to the point of where he was tired of these extra hours and everybody asking him to, you know, take another sort of task on here and not receiving any more money for it. His salary was not even going up with inflation. And, you know, at the same time before the pandemic had started, he had thought about starting his own company. And once, you know, the pandemic hit and once all these different uh, issues started to arise, then uh, in September 2021, he did leave his job. And now that was September 21 was the height of the Great Resignation so far. That was the 3% of everybody leaving their job month. Hmm. And so he did that and he started his own uh, logistics company and he does uh, trucking. He, he bought his own 26 foot truck, which is one that you don't need a commercial driver's license for. Hmm. And he has a nearly unlimited amount of work that he can do. Uh, sometimes hmm. he'll drive things across the country. Other times he'll just do it in the Phoenix area where he lives. And he has a, a incredible flexibility. He's, he's making more money and he's getting to spend more time with his daughter. So I, I think hmm. similarly to, to what we saw with Verena, it was kind of like being able to use the great resignation and this sort of like 
you know, new ability to do something else to benefit your personal life. Hmm. And Dominic's not the only type of worker who we're seeing kind of level up in certain ways. Uh, you also, lastly, talked to a high school graduate named Madeline out in College Station, Texas. How are recent high school grads or maybe college grads using this great resignation as an opportunity to kind of level up, so to speak, in the job market? So she had planned on becoming a veterinarian assistant after she graduated high school in 2021. But the pandemic, you know, made it impossible to do the necessary coursework and in-person clinic hours to do that. And without this sort of certification, it's really hard to become a veterinary assistant because vets prefer someone with that certification. So Madeline was just kind of figuring that she would continue to work at Pet Supply Plus, you know, essentially a Petco, PetSmart type of deal and just kind of maybe hope for the best. But then so many other people quit jobs, including in veterinarians' offices, that they needed more work. And Pembleton found one in her hometown of College Station, even though there's a, a really big university there, Texas A&M, coincidentally where Anthony Klotz, the uh, great resignation professor, works. And usually those jobs are taken up by college students who have this certification, but they just needed more people to work. So Madeline got that job, and now she's on uh, what she believes to be the right path to one day entering veterinary school. Hmm. And so it was just kind of like this thing where you know she was really able to take advantage of this very flexible labor market. This is kind of like a extreme example of, of someone really being able to get this like big job. But I think you've seen it elsewhere for people who are teenagers who are actually able to get jobs, period. Yeah, it's funny. It seems as if, you know, the Great Resignation is creating opportunities for certain folks like Madeline. But going back to Lucas again, uh, I'm just thinking of him hopping around from service job to service job and not really finding much significantly better treatment in each avenue that he's pursuing. So it does make me think that some companies are just refusing to adapt to this moment and change their philosophies around work. And others might be seizing the moment and using this as an opportunity to attract really good talent. Yeah, I, I think that we'll kind of like have to see how this continues to play out, right? Because if people do continue to leave, then one would hope that eventually, you know, we'll see some of these companies who historically and currently are not treating their employees in the way that they should probably be treated, we'll see if this starts to chip away at that. I mean, it, it's been going on for a year now and clearly showing no signs of stopping. So, I mean, optimistically, one would hope that the sort of employers are going to realize that the right thing to do is sort of change their ways. I think the customer also has a role in this a little bit too. I mean, if you go to a restaurant or a hotel or any type of place that is short staffed or has a lot of inexperienced people because the turnover is really high or people just aren't enthusiastic about their work in any way, shape or form, I think you as the customer can feel that. And as your experience in these places starts to degrade and as the Yelp reviews start to sink, I mean, the business has to look at what it's doing and say, where is the problem? And if the problem is a bad manager or you don't pay people enough or, you know, you just don't create an environment that people want to work in and stay at, mm -hmm. then you're going to start losing customers. And so I think for a lot of these people, hopefully they're realizing the best thing they can do is invest in employees who want to stay there and then mm -hmm. that will improve their business. I mean, I know I don't go to places where I have to wait you know, 35 minutes for someone to get me a cup of coffee and it feels like they hate it there and I can see people being rude to each other. Like that is right, not where I would right. choose to go. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that'll, right. I think that's another aspect. I, I think it's just going to keep on happening at least for another couple of years. And, you know, I even exchanged a couple emails with Anthony Klotz who coined the great resignation and he thinks it's going to keep on going. There's one particular number that just like jumped out at me, which is that the Microsoft work trends index found out last year that around 40% of people are thinking about leaving their jobs. And, mm -hmm. and I get that like, that's just thinking about leaving. But when you think that like the record number for a share of workers who have quit in a month is 3%, <laughs> and then you think nearly half of workers are thinking of leaving. I, I just, I can't imagine how this won't continue for at least another couple of years and potentially become like a new normal uh, mm -hmm. where workers feel a lot more empowered. You know, as we were kind of just discussing earlier, unfortunately, especially for those in service type of industries, the employers are going to be very slow to catch on. Hmm. 
All right. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for listening to the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. I'm Zachary Crockett. Big thanks to Mark and Juliet for joining me today. If you liked what you heard today, we've got a lot more tech and business coverage over at thehustle.co. Catch you all next week.